what a nice beginning. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another uh, Women in Tech meetup. This one is, of course, special, and I think uh, we all know why, because tomorrow is International Women's Day. And as much we like to receive flowers uh, to celebrate our day, we want uh, a bit more. We want to be heard, we want to be seen, we want to have the same rights and the same starting position. And unfortunately, it seems we have still a lot of steps until there, till that day. But luckily, events like this are a little step forward to, to reach that place. So I would like also uh, to thank that girl there, <laughs> Nicolina, who is initiator and organizer of today's event. Uh, because without her, this wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here today. So, please, a round of applause for Nicolina. I know you will take it because of this. <laughs> and of course, uh, three amazing women who will tell our story today. Three totally different startups, uh, different experiences, but more or less the same goal to be empowered women while empowering other women, more or less, yeah. So we will not talk about uh, so much about their startups, but for the start, I will ask a little bit about that. But later on, we will continue to talk about our experiences, insights, dreams, wishes, <laughs> etc. Are you ready, girls? <laughs> Thank you. So uh, Nicolina, Anna and Vanya, uh, could you please just shortly describe what your startups about? When did you begin? What's your wish? Where do you want to come? Okay, so hi everyone. I'm Nicolina and I am still a student at the Faculty of Economics. Uh, so uh, my startup is Evala. It's a digital travel guide. Um, we started a year ago, more, more than a year ago, a year and a half, uh, through Student Business Incubator. Uh, I actually had a lot of years experience in tourism and I've noticed that there are some things that are lacking in our offer and that's why we wanted to create an app that's going to make every city feel like home and that's exactly what our app does. Can you hear her? Okay, okay. if we need to volume up please let us know. <laughs> uh, why Evala? Uh, maybe some people don't know what is Evala in Dalmatian language. <laughs> uh, Evala is a traditional Dalmatian greeting. So we wanted to like connect the local thing with the digitalization, let's say it like that. And that's why we, and I, I think it sounds good because in every language you can easily pronounce it. So it, it's it, melodic, like Evala. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nicolina. Anna, your story, I think many people are already familiar with it. Uh, as I know, you are tomorrow also on two panels. You are really like talking a lot about your story. It's a huge inspiration. But give us a few sentences about your startup. Uh, so hi, my name is Anna. Uh, my startup is called, it's called Metabelly. We do personalized nutrition uh, based on gut bacteria, uh, insight into gut bacteria, and we have supplements for gut health. And I started it because I did, uh, I was working at fac faculty and I did PhD on the subject and we had a lot of science and no application. So I wanted to do some application. It's obvious that she is very well experienced in pitching, like 15 minutes, 50 seconds <laughs> explanation. <laughs> Thank you. And Vanya, you have an other, other story to yes. give. Uh, hi, I'm Vanya. I run um, I'm Alive. I'm one of the co-founders to I'm Alive. I'm Alive is a live streaming platform for artists. Um, we're aiming to do what Twitch did for gaming for the performing arts world. And I think that then sums it up. Uh, let's continue with you. This is this is Vanya uh, something that you were not working before at all in this culture sphere. Yeah. You were in a different world, literally. You were in a different continent, working completely something something else. So my dirty little secret is that I don't know anything about the arts, and I really don't like technology. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, sounds promising. So, um, I actually studied uh, finance. I worked as an investment consultant for uh, just over 10 years. Um, that was in Canada. And when I decided that I was coming back to Croatia, um, I quit my 
job and I lucked into a startup in the wealth management space in Toronto. I became a co-founder and I ran the startup from Split and I would travel back and forth for two and a half years Toronto Split. And that was a very, very uh, painful lesson of getting into the startup world because I'd always worked corporate before. Um, so completely different mentality, completely different way of work, um, different people, different styles. Everything was new to me, even though the industry was exactly the same. Um, I did that for about two and a half years. And while I decided I wanted to leave the industry, um, I loved the startup world. I loved, actually, I figured out that I really liked creating something. And then during COVID, actually, I have um, my husband's a musician, an amateur musician. So, and we have some friends who also are in the, in the industry. And so when people started streaming during COVID, one of my questions was, you know, don't you guys, they were complaining about all the platforms. Mm -hmm. Don't you guys have a platform for yourselves? And the answer was no. I actually tried to give the idea away because I didn't think I could do something that I didn't know anything about or the industry that I didn't know anything about. Um, nobody took it. So I thought, hmm, I still think it's a really good idea. I am confident enough that I can put together a little team. And that's how we started. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a completely different story. This is very inspiring to go in, in some territory unknown till then. I think you have to be a little, like you have to be, I call it taking calculated risks. Um, mm -hmm. You have to take risks, but I'm not somebody who just does everything with my eyes closed. I need to have things prepared. I need to have a plan B to a degree. So this calculated risk, I knew that if it didn't work out, and even today, if it doesn't work out, there will always be another project for me that I'm going to keep working on. So mm. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Serial project lady. <laughs> Uh, Anna, your story is different. You went uh, from the scientific part on your PhD and you realized, as you said before, I need to apply this somewhere. It's not just on the paper in some conferences, scientific knowledge out there, but really to help people. Uh, yes, I was working in science for 10 years and it was really super slow and super not applicable. Like you have really good technology, but no real life application of it. And before this, I was in two startups. One, one was for tourism, one was for cryptocurrency. They both failed. Uh, so <clears throat> I had some failing experience in startups before. And then this uh, was in my head, like I had a clear vision of how to apply technology for, I think, four years. Uh, but it took me four years to like to take it from my head to the market. We will talk about this more. This is important part. Um, okay, if you are having a startup in tourism, you can learn from mistakes that she <laughs> <laughs> she knows. Uh, what is your story? You started as a student. You are still a student in student incubator, yeah? Yes. So basically, after I finished my bachelor degree, I felt kind of stuck. I didn't know where to go. I didn't see myself in in corporate kind of business. And I wanted to try something myself. So then COVID happened and uh, we it actually was in the middle of COVID and we were stuck in homes and I was just thinking a lot about traveling. And then when we started to travel, we could only do it within our borders. So I was like going from places to places and um, realized how little you can really pick up fast so you really need to like explore a lot before going and everyone we, we are living quick so everyone needs everything like in a second so I applied to after a year I applied to student business incubator because I was really afraid if if my idea was going to be good enough and then I started working on it and it's going good so far if I understood all three of you started during COVID <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you use the how, how you confront the crisis situation even the global huge crisis just create your own your own ideas amazing this is really inspiring uh, I, I would like to ask you both of you said like I was waiting I was thinking if I am good enough uh, Anna you even said in one interview that the biggest obstacle was actually yourself to start, can you elaborate? Yes, I was super afraid, like of 
I, I'm not even sure what I was afraid more of succeeding or failing or someone like me putting something out there and that not being perfect and then like being ashamed because of not being perfect or whatever and then that took that was holding me back a lot and we were just talking now before because in the last startup i was working with my ex and then he's like super super confident and he's not like smart more smart than me or more intelligent or, or whatever but he was like super confident guy and then like even in that startup i i like he was leading and then at some point I figured out, like, if he can do it, then, like, I'm the only, just my brain was telling me I'm not good enough or I'm not going to be able to do it or whatever. So that was the only obstacle. And then but because of COVID, I came back from Australia and I couldn't find a, a job in Croatia. And I was, like, I didn't have enough money in that point because I was not working and I was doing PhD. And then... I was just like, okay, let's try, and then either I will succeed or fail, like pro properly fail. But I still <laughs> did. <laughs> so, at least you know you tried, yeah. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, it is scary. I mean, just recently I I, I entered this entre I always have a problem with this word, <laughs> entrepreneurial world, let's say, and it is exciting, but it's really like, am I good enough? And I I, I do you agree that? at least from my experience, most of women have this imposter syndrome that we are not good enough, that we need to be perfect to go on stage, to go to make our project, to do whatever. Um, okay, can I just... Yeah, I mean, all of the uh, question is... For me, it was like really interesting because I uh, got uh, won an award for women in science. And then when I won an award, I was, I, f I, I felt like I... Um, like I, I got it, but it, it, I, it wasn't like I didn't do any proper science. It was not worth it. Right? And I felt really like an imposter syndrome out of it. And then I talked to my therapist and she said, you have to put the feeling like to, to put it out there. And then four women got the award and I, we, we were doing makeup. And I said how I felt and all three other women were feeling the same way. And well, for me, when I was looking at them, I was like, oh, they're so smart and beautiful and whatever. And for me, it was like I, I'm. Like, I, I don't even know. I tricked everyone into getting yeah. this the feeling in my head. But then, like, when you talk to, when you put it out there, you see that women have all, we all had the same feeling. And there was this lady who was putting the makeup on us. And she said, she's working on national television for 20 years. And she said that, like, every woman, woman uh, always, like, feels the same way when receiving the award, including Severina. She's, like, the star here. And, like, that no man ever felt like he wasn't good enough for an wow. award. This gave so. me goosebumps, really. Wow, yeah. I mean, uh, I read some research that uh, men apply for a job if they have only 60% of, of qualifications required, and they apply. While women, even if we have 100%, like we are perfect fit, we are still like, oh, should I? Am I good enough? Vanya, did you experience it? Is it maybe, can you compare maybe even Canada society there? Is it uh, different? I think so. I, th I think I've experienced like this imposter syndrome a few times. Um, but I think also, I don't know, I don't, I don't think I'm that special or that different, but I've always kind of fought for something my, like my entire life. And so when you're used to that, then you don't think about it maybe as much and until you like, I don't have awards or anything like that. So I've never sat there thinking like, oh, I shouldn't get that award, but you don't have time to think about, um, am I good enough necessarily? Because you're constantly just trying taking baby steps. That's at least that's been my, my experience. Um, I also think I didn't realize this until very, very late in life that I've had really good male mentors, starting with my dad. Like when I was a kid, it was never like, you're a woman, so you can only do this. Mm. It was like, you're a woman, so you have to be better at this and that and that to prepare you for later. And then I had, when I started working uh, to this day, my one of my closest friends now was my first boss, who was a guy and my mentor who I still, so I've been very, very lucky to have male role models who pushed me forward much more so without thinking that I'm a woman basically mm. so uh, before this I worked in a very male dominated environment as well so I've always been in it and maybe that's a bit of a difference so when I worked in finance um, I have a, a CFA it's a, a, a finance 
uh, degree kind of, and only 15% are women. And so I've always been one of like either the only one in the room or the youngest one in the room or something like that. And I'd never thought about it until I was on the outside. I guess you step out and you look at it. So this idea that you're not good enough, I think to Anna's point, it kind of goes into your brain, but on like a day day to day basis for me. So when I have a bad day, I'm like, oh my God, I'm never going to do this. But it doesn't really have anything to do with me as a woman necessarily, if that makes sense. Mm. I just blabbed a lot. No, I like it. <laughs> Please don't stop yourself. We are here to share. Yeah. <laughs> Nicolina, you told me something uh, when we were talking before this event that uh, in Student Business Incubator also most of the men, student, male students are applying uh, and then this small percent of women, they, they also... They, they, they kind of get out before <laughs> it gets real. Well. It is kind of, um, we have more, I guess it, it depends from year to year, but what I've noticed is that the girls tend to quit uh, sooner when like the first obstacle came, they're just like, okay, I'm not good enough. I'm going to try next year or I'm going to try something else. So I don't think a girl should do that. I think we should like stay and, and work until we're good enough to be there and to, because it, it's just, it, we are still, in this case, we are still students and uh, we have a lot of time in front of us, so we should like try to do fail and then see what we can do after that. Mm. You can always fail, not just while you're a student, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I read also that um, in some research that when women have a women woman has a problem, for example, in programming IT, uh, she goes to her superior and she says. I'm the problem. I'm not good enough. I'm not. I don't know how to do it. While her male colleague would say something is wrong with the code. So this simple switch, like, is it the code the problem or is it me, is already a huge difference. Uh, but maybe I'm. I am. I have an MA in sociology, so I'm addicted to to research. So I'm sorry about. Uh, but I need to share another uh, statistics. Uh, there was a. a amazing story. So there was a text uh, about one person and uh, they gave it to the students in two groups. So group A got a text where the protagonist was a man and group B got a text where protagonist is a woman. And later on they questioned the students uh, to describe that person. And uh, when they were describing, so it's the exactly same story, just him or her. her. And uh, when they were describing him, he was boss. But she was bossy. Yeah. When they were describing him, he was providing for his family. While her was not taking care of her family, too much careeristic. When they were describing him, he was stylish and she was showing off. And that is the problem because all among those students were also women. So would you say that sometimes even us as women are enemies to other women, like not giving them hand, not wanting them to shine, to be the best version of themselves? Sadly, yes. <laughs> Silently and sadly. Yeah, sadly, yes. I think that uh, my, that's my experience, some of the worst people were the women who I worked with. Um, and I used to, I'll give you a quick story. I had a uh, a boss who um, I started working for her when I was 25. She was 60 something, very, very accomplished. Like I was a nobody in, in this world of finance. And she was really great to me until I started being very good at my job. And then she would dig at me with little digs. Like we'd come back from a pitch and she'd say, your face gets really red when you pitch. And of course my, then obviously my face blows up and, and so on. And so instead of having somebody who was supposed to promote you mm. it was so somebody and i made money just for her like i had a regular salary and i think it was this idea that like she had to suffer and i had to feel the same pain that she already went through so we haven't actually evolved to say like okay i went through that so that she doesn't have to mm. it's like if i sit here and say well i had to do this 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 and this and i had to suffer through this this and this so nicolina has to do the same for the next 20 years so she could achieve what i achieved and I think that's the wrong way of thinking about it. Rather than lifting each other up, we're unfortunately still look, looking at each other at, at 
uh, as competition, basically, that we're competing for whether it's the same job, the same role, or if another woman is more successful than I am in whatever that success, however it is defined, uh, it still happens a lot. And that's been my, my personal experience that it's not, I, I don't, I haven't had any horrible experiences with men, I've been lucky that way, um, but it's the women that have been absolutely more detrimental to my career than the men I've worked with. Okay, do we have some other experience? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, thank you for yeah. sharing, but yeah, I understand. I Anna. have pretty similar. <laughs> oh, oh my God, prefer? okay, we need to change this. <laughs> but first, let's talk about it. So what was your experience? Uh, it's pretty sim similar. Like if uh, I feel like women are supportive up until you go up, like you're higher than whatever higher means like because success like is different for everyone but like every guy or man on my way like they would either help me or like move themselves from the way they're they were never like not helping and with women i i like for example i was working at university and i got a uh, big project for some lab and some equipment and blah, blah. And like, I was really proud of myself. I was 25, I think, when I managed to set up everything. And then the women from from the office next to, next to mine, they, they were started talking like, oh, she did everything because she's sleeping with her boss and blah, blah, blah. But the story came from women like, I don't know. I, it it was disturbing in the point. Now, now it doesn't hurt anymore. But when it happened, I, I really hurt because I felt like, oh, that's such a great thing. And it wasn't perceived that way. Mm. And plus, I like this is maybe not what I should say on women <laughs> events, <laughs> but like I feel that women tend to be more uh, vicious. Like if a guy doesn't like you, you see that he doesn't like you. They they tend to fake. Uh, way less, at least from my experience. Mm -hmm. Manipulation kind sad, of. I would say. But, but not all women. Really <laughs> <be> careful. <laughs> okay, I will share. I had luck with women, not all of them. But yeah, some, some uh, women uh, supporters and mentors were really like influencing uh, my way a lot. What about you, Nicolina? I had luck with women yeah. as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no, actually, every job that I have worked on, the, uh, we had a female boss, so I never had, pro and they were really supportive and they really wanted to help. But I think what's the problem with the girls is that we think like there is only 14% of the girls in some business. And then we are not looking like, okay, we should expand it to 18, 20%. We are looking, how can I get into that 14% and take someone out of it? So I think that's why we are actually not, not, not building it up to a bigger percentage than we are just like throwing people out to, to get there. Mm. Yeah, interesting point. I mean, I, I had experience when I was working on radio that uh, most of older colleagues, especially men actually, were calling me Mala, like baby. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then a guy showed up who was, I was superior to him. I was mentoring him and he wasn't babe or anything like this. From her, from the day one, he was respected, and I was like there already a few years, and I was still ah, this one. It's like sweet. You can't be offended by it. So do you see still this kind of? I mean, it was 10, 15 years ago, so I'm also over it. But do you think that still stuff like this are happening even in startup worlds, or you may be moved from all this public sector corporations, whatever, to make your own story and to shine like you want? <laughs> Um, uh, what I've noticed is that if I have a guy standing with me and we are going to a meeting with someone, uh, I've noticed that people tend to turn toward them and talk with them first and then towards me as, as, the, as the conversation goes. So that, that's something I like, but, but okay, he, he gets his, he, he, he has his job and his part, but I can explain way better some business things than he can. So. So I this is this prejudice that yeah, he's your boss, probably. I Where is your boss, babe? <laughs> I don't get why that happens. Yeah. But okay, because the people that we talk to, they don't know us. That he can be like not in the project at all. I could be the only one. And then the people just turn towards him and be like, oh, you tell more? And I'm like, okay. So do we have still this stereotype in tech that it's, I mean, it is a male dominated world, but uh, do you think that we still, when we see a woman in tech, 
that she is in marketing, HR, administration, and that's it. Like there's no other, other way for her. I don't like. I think I'm pretty isolated to be honest because <laughs> we like we have a team. Um, so my co-founder is male. Um, even though he's got more prettier hair than I do, so I make jokes <laughs> about that. Um, and but we have more females on the team than we have more women than we have men right now. And what I was especially proud of was that our best programmer is a woman. <laughs> yes. What? Well, but that took like we get so we when it comes to the programming part, we had. Um, I don't know how many applications and she was the only woman who applied and she was the best she got the job and she was the best one but uh in terms of when people look at i don't know how they perceive me so i don't know like i know i don't i hope i don't have those stereotypes so because i i pitch our startup i'm i'm the ceo so i'm technically you know because we we both do everything but i'm the one who's writing about it i'm the one who's speaking about it so people actually naturally come to me, I'm a bit older as well, so maybe that has something to do with it. Um, he does all all the tech, and so we're I think we're a bit isolated, like in our little bubble, where we make sure that we don't do these kinds of things. And so I don't really have bad experiences, honestly. Um, also, maybe a bit pushy, so I just kind of get in there. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's 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 important to know how to yeah they know how to put the board yeah. like. I got, this is a funny, but when, when I started working, so I worked in finance, it was very male dominated. And um, I had a woman tell me that I should always wear, always wear very high heels to work with long pants so that you couldn't, and worked, this actually worked, okay? With pants so they couldn't tell because then I was super tall. So then if I had a man come into the room, he had to go like this to meet me. And honestly, it's, it's such a like, psychological thing, but it really works. <laughs> so for years and years and years, I wore stilettos to work like this, and I was one of the tallest ones in the room. <laughs> so if somebody had to, like my, when I had bosses, like if I had, a, I had one particular boss who I didn't really like, so when he would come and tell me something, I, I always sat because I was, I was conscious of this. So he could tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. And then when he would like totally piss me off, then I would like literally just stand up and be like, yes. And then, back, and then he would back away right away and it works. Wow. So it's not just, I don't think it's just men, women. It's actual physical, you know, when somebody's bigger than you, when somebody has a bigger personality, I think that also stands out. And women naturally tend to be, I think, a little more conservative than, than men. Yeah, we are raised up to yeah. be like, you know, shy and uh, behave good, don't fight for yourself, you yeah. uh, know. Speaking of male-dominated world and competition and fighting, you two have an interesting story from a Get In The Ring startup competition. As I remember, there was 30 competi competitors, out of three of them were women, and all three of you were in the finals, yeah. so this is good. I mean, it's a small percentage, but 100% uh, of you <laughs> went to the finals. <laughs> And you two ended up in the ring. Anna, could you tell a story? How how did it go? Yes, we <laughs> they were in the ring. <laughs> um, it was in the morning. It was like this pre-selection, and then they called us afternoon and t told us who is with uh, who is with who in the competition. And Lana called me and said, "Oh, I have a great news for you, but I also have a bad news because Vanya is your competition." <laughs> uh, and then. Uh, I was honestly afraid of her. You at the I, moment, I seem to have but... this effect on people often. <laughs> Maybe no. we have a fight here. That no, but I, I don't think we met. We didn't know each other back then. Yeah. And she was a jury a year before yeah. on the competition, competition. So for me, it was pretty scary. But And then part of the competition is you get really into the ring with the gloves and a uh, thing with your head and you have to stand there and like fist fight and that's like the part Wait, of it. Wait, really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, it's US franchise. Oh, so I understand. Like big show around <laughs> it. And then there is a part where you have uh, like to beef, is that how you say, to beef one another, like to tell something bad about mm -hmm. another person and that's the part of the competition. And then we agreed uh, before. before, like not to go like one against each other, but like when you, because there was a part of freestyle and then in, in freestyle you should talk bad about mm -hmm. another person, but we just talked well about ourselves and not talk bad about another person. So. We did it like, uh, we fought like ladies. Yeah. 
How did the jury react? Uh, I think there were. I think it was, uh, it was okay. Yeah, yeah. So maybe that's the recipe, like not to put down others, but just to like be your best, be best version of yourself. You don't need to be afraid of others, yeah. And what uh, you said before, like of being in male-dominated world, world, and then you also kind of act like a, yeah. a man and that what I didn't have any bad experience but I was also like always more like men and not like women in that and I think it's important like to be a woman in mm -hmm. this male dominated mm -hmm. world and not go like on their side and yeah. then fight with them or whatever but like to bring the woman energy to the men's and you world. did exactly that I remember when I was a uh teenage that some some of my male friends told me you are not like a typical guru you are more like a buddy like a man and i was so proud i thought it's good thing it's, mm -hmm. it means i'm strong i'm smart i'm different women it's total bullshit actually yeah. <laughs> so you brought this female energy Com cooperation not competition mm -hmm. maybe we should make like a dance floor a startup <laughs> competition not a ring um what do you think uh, is when you hear this stuff? Is it a little bit different in the in, in your age group of age, like in the students' world? No, uh, I hope it is. <laughs> I think it is. I mean, we are each like we are we are growing every day. So I think that that nowadays people are more like we are trying to be better. I guess, but I don't know if we we are actually succeeding at being better. I think we are just like uh, pushing down the, the, the bad stuff and like pretend to be okay because mm. there are still there are still people, m girls out there who are trying to like uh, get you down with how you look, uh, stuff like that that's, that's really not important in, in a business at, at all. So just before this event we were talking about tomorrow is International Women's Day, we have this night march. I don't know if you heard about it and we were like do we still need it and then we started to talk and 10 minutes later we were like oh my god we really need it there's so many things still there that that needs to be changed and um, uh, can women break this this glass this ceiling glass do you think it's it's possible that one day we will actually not need to have this this fight let's say to be in the same position as a man, to, to be heard and not to be, hey, you can talk to me as well. Do you think it, that time is coming or it's still far away? I think it's coming. How, how soon and how, how to come there? Uh, I don't know, I see uh, uh, in science world where it was male dominated world before and now it's like 40, 50% women are in science and then also in the entrepreneur I also yeah, cannot I pronounce it. Uh, entrepreneurship <laughs> world. Uh, I see that there is more and more women uh, founders and uh, w women who who like, have the guts to go into that world. So at least I'm not, I'm not sure is it my focus on positive. So I see it that way. But from my point of view, it's really getting better. But then again, you have a part I was on um, European Startup Summit last year, and then there was pitch, uh, pitches, 15 pitches, eight women. But I'm not sure that they like pinpoint women to mm -hmm. have like 50% or is it really like that they had the best startups? Yeah, this is interesting. Sure. I mean, because of all of this political correctness, sometimes we are just pushing women out there, even though maybe maybe they shouldn't be there. So do, did you feel in, in technology, in this, I, uh, this startup world, that uh, you as women had more obstacles because of you because you were women or even privilege i mean that's also maybe happening that we have this positive discrimination sometimes i think so um i think it depends on what you're looking at um so i think hiring and being employees employed in the tech world i think is becoming easier for women um, so again, starting with universities where you have some programmers, you have other roles than stereotypical HR and, and so on. Um, when it comes to investment, because most startups require investment and huge amounts of it, the problem is, so I think I just heard a stat that in Europe, I think 1% of funding went to women, female founded startups. 
and the problem there is not that there aren't there aren't enough women so we need more women just in the startup world but secondly all the investors are men and so we need women on the investment side to solve the problem of women investing in women and not women investing in women but connection so in investment in this world is all about how you connect you go for drinks you go i don't know play golf if you play golf and, and so it's easier for women to connect with women often that's just natural it's easier for men to connect with men based on whether what, what they're uh, they have in common and so we need a lot of different areas where we need to fix in order to get the whole picture so it's not just saying we don't have enough women in, in the startup world because you might have a lot of founders but if they're not getting funded their startups are not going to succeed and then they're going to go work at a startup and make that other startup successful but maybe it's a male founder and so there's a lot of different kind of uh, things that go into this big picture we also have an opportunity to take advantage of things like my high heels where I can be very tall. I am not like, I don't differentiate between like male and female startup found, like they're all just founders to me. And, but if, and I don't necessarily think well, that if a woman is not as good that she should be rewarded for something just because she's a woman. But if you're given these opportunities, then I say take them. So mm. there's female founders out of Austria, out of Vienna, who just started a fund that invests strictly in startups that has to have at least one founder who's a female. So they're not going to. So right away, all the male founded teams are off. They're not. They have a fund of 30 million euros that is being invested in something like that. And they're going to push some startups to apply and 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 to be successful ultimately with with raising money so there are certain things where there is I'll, i don't know if discrimination can ever be positive but i'll call it positive <laughs> discrimination where we can take advantage of it and until we get to a day where we don't need these types of funds i say you just take advantage of them <laughs> like really uh if they're given to you because i won't be invited um to, I don't know, a club where that's a male only club. I won't be. And I don't think that's necessarily terrible either. Like we, we, they, they bond at a certain level and maybe we can have mixed clubs as well. I'm not obviously against that, but why don't we have female only clubs then if they have male only clubs where we can get together and we can again, make each other powerful and stronger and, and make sure that, okay, if there's a male club and a female club, at least there's equal numbers of mm -hmm. us that then we get to the top together. That's just my, yeah, and I, when we were preparing for this event, uh, I believe all four of us, including uh, where is Nicolina, <laughs> we said like we really hope that in the future there will not be like you said mm -hmm. at all necess necessarily this prefix of female yeah. or of women that it will just be entrepreneur, not female entrepreneur, women entrepreneur. I still don't know how to say this word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> Last question, you, okay, two questions. Uh, you had some good or bad examples being mentored by a woman. Would you be a mentor to other women today from this point of, of your life? Yeah? Yes. So grab them. Yes. <laughs> grab, you, so you heard, grab the opportunity. And uh, advice to all of these ladies here and some online, online in the future how to get out of your comfort zone, how to be more confident, whatever it's in your mind, please share it with the world, now or never. <laughs> Starting from the oh, okay. <laughs> Um I'd say just do it, basically. So if you have an idea, if you want to try something, just go for it. You, you can't lose anything. You can just like meet a lot of different people. Like I wouldn't be here if I didn't go out of my comfort zone. And I think like, there, there, are, there are lots of people that are going to be very, very, very supportive and they're going to show you a lot of opportunities and whether your startup doesn't work, you, you can still find a job in, in some, some amazing company that you never thought you, you would be able to get. So just, just go out and believe in yourself and that's it because no, no one's better than, than anyone else. So just go for it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Sign. Uh, um, yeah, I think that fear is normal and uh, like act even though the fear is there, not to let fear like hold you back, but like to to act with it. 
and like she, what she said like you get an amazing support of people once you get out there and they're much more supportive than i expected in the beginning and for me like great lesson was done is better than perfect mm -hmm. so just do it and put it out there and then you can change it and fix it and whatever but like not to get stuck in my bedroom and waiting for things to be perfect because they are never perfect in the end we are humans there's no perfection <laughs> Get yourself a dog. <laughs> Anybody who knows me, I have a dog who I, I love dearly. My husband says I love her more than I love him. And she comes to work with me and everything. Um, kidding. Um, I, I think it, you, these guys already said it. Like, you just kind of have to go for it, which is a lot easier said than, than done, to be honest with you. Um, I think if you can get one or two people around you who support you, that is huge. Um, really really support you and and when you're going through those days where you really don't feel that you can do it you're smart enough you're anything enough that this person will pick you up and help you along whether that's a co-founder um, if you are going to go down the entrepreneurial route um, so I I don't think I could do this without Ivan um, I think we do this together and when, when I have bad days then he lifts me up, I complain, like you should see our Slack channel of, of complaints. Um, so just to go, like what these guys said, to go for it. And if you fail, that just means that you'll come up with something else later. I don't, I'll speak for myself, but I have no idea if my startup is going to work. We're actually, most likely, if we look at stats, I'm gonna fail. And I don't know if that's gonna be tomorrow or that's after we get millions of dollars in funding or we're gonna sell it and be the next unicorn. And the one thing is just to be comfortable with yourself that if you fail, it's not really a reflection on you as a person. It's just, you, you gave it a try and, and you move on. It's not you, it's the code. No, it's that, it's that, <laughs> <it's laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I guess that's. Applause, please. Thank you.